By 2025, Apple is going to ditch the older iPhone 8 style of the iPhone SE in favor of an iPhone 14 styled redesign. According to current rumors, this is going to involve the SE getting the same body as the iPhone 14, with the same type of aluminum being used, the exact same dimensions, a similar weight at just 6 grams lighter, and very similar features. For example, it's rumored that the 4th generation SE is going to drop the ringer switch in favor of the action button. This makes sense considering that Apple plans to make the action button a standard feature across the entire iPhone 16 lineup in 2024, so considering the 2025 release window for the SE 4, this falls right in line with Apple's development plans. Unfortunately, Apple may not give the iPhone SE the new capture button that's expected on the iPhone 16 Pro, but we could potentially see this on a 5th generation model. But the ringer switch is not the only legacy feature being replaced. Earlier rumors stated that the iPhone SE could introduce a Touch ID sensor embedded in the lock button, but more recent rumors have changed saying that Touch ID would be scrapped entirely, and in its place would be a notch for face ID. Basically, this means that the third generation iPhone SE could be the last iPhone to use Touch ID. But on the plus side, the display itself could be massively improved, with the 4.7 inch LCD display on the third generation being replaced with a 6.1 inch OLED display, which would bring better colors and brightness. But the design and features aren't the only things being lifted from the iPhone 14. More recent rumors say that the new SE could even use the exact same 3,279 milliamp hour battery, which would hopefully translate to much better battery life versus the SE3's 2018 milliamp hour battery. Speaking of better battery life, Apple is planning to improve this even further by introducing their own custom modems for 5G. Right now, all iPhones with 5Gs use modems made by Qualcomm, but rumors say that by 2025, Apple will be introducing a new custom design modem for all new iPhones starting that year, with the intent of improving both cellular performance and battery life. And with the EU cracking down on their USB-C mandate, Apple's expected to release the SE with a USB-C charging port instead of Lightning. If I had to guess, we'd probably be keeping the same charging speeds as usual. There doesn't seem to be any word about whether it'll get MagSafe, but we may get more information about this the closer it gets to the launch date. And even though the SE could keep the single camera lens as usual, Apple may be upgrading it from the typical 12 megapixel sensor to the 48 megapixel camera from the past couple of iPhones. Even though we won't be getting any extra sensors this time around, Apple could use this to add the two X optical quality zoom like we got on the iPhone 14 Pro. As far as price goes, there aren't any definite rumors yet, but it's been speculated that we could see the price increase from $429 to about $450 or even $500. And if that does happen, then this could make the SE4 a harder sell considering that the big appeal of the SE lineup is its lower price. Unfortunately, it'll still be a couple of years before we see any of this with a planned release in 2025, but on the plus side, we will end up seeing some major upgrades for the iPhone 16 next year as well. So check out this video next to learn about everything we know so far about the iPhone 16 lineup, and I'll see you over there. Adios.